Have we lost our relevance, Matty, if, if they're putting announcements on ASX now? I don't know. Are we, are we obsolete? Well, who would have thought... Are we now redundant? Who would have thought a, a takeover proposal would be material? Hey, in what world is a bloody decker billion dollar merger the second most important news of the day? According to us, apparently. <laughs> we are a bit attached. We are a bit attached to this uh, SLR thing. Right, let's get into to the, the revised deal. Now, look, you think it's changed, but first pass, the cash is the same, the shares are the same. There's been a little bit of clever rejigging to avoid this independent experts report that I guess St. Barbara might have been deeming as something that could slow down this whole DD process. Lads, let's get into it. Let's go through the deal. What is the new revised deal from Silver Lake that has made the ASX? Check it out on the ASX, everyone. Yeah, I think you've you've hit the nail on the head. So the number of shares being issued, 327.1 million, stays the same. The, um, the number or the amount of cash rather stays the same. The, the total consideration actually goes down because those Shares are valued at a slightly lower price, and that just factors in that the Silver Lake share price has come down a bit since the um, the initial transaction. So, seven hundred and seven million is the the headline number, and yeah, one one take might be that Silver Lake are trying to just re-engage that St. Barbara board and sort of make them, you know, potentially say no. I guess in Silver Silver Lake's case, ideally say yes to being able to do some due diligence. So they had. The previous offer headline was $732 million. Now it is $707 million. And as JD explained, that takes into account the reduction in Silver Lake's share price. And another thing that confused me first looking at it, but we figured out why, we'll get into the – it was the 19.99% plus they said another 7%. 7.6%, yeah, seven, yeah. but that was uh, the portion of those remaining shares. So the actual share portion is still the same and St. Barbara will still own, I think it's 26.2% of Silver Lake. So, well, not really because the the shares, like, a, like a, you know, a huge portion of shares are just going to be in specie distributed to St. Barbara shareholders. So it's not going to be owned by St. Barbara. They'll be. They'll be. The they'll just belong to the shareholders. Yeah. Okay. So let's go. Let's go into this nineteen point nine nine percent and how they've restructured this share distribution side of it, lads. Right. Hit. Super clever, mate. Take it's it away, really Trav. Yeah. Did they listen to us about the independent expert report? Well, I've, I think. I've got I, a feeling they knew. It, like, I think this is super clever, right? Because they've reduced the conditionality of the deal in a, in a pretty big way and also in a pretty public way, and the intention there is to have the board of St. Barbara review it's um, whether or not it's going to be a, a superior deal or not. And they don't have to, they don't have to say it's a superior deal or not yet. They just have to open the door from a, a due diligence perspective, or, or that's what sort of encouraged um, in, in order to progress things to the next stage. So very, I think it's just, it's super, super clever. Right. And the way that they've done that is, um, is by framing the, the, the share component, the script component to be um, you know, this, this, large portion of it, the 19.9% of it, um, uh, or, or an equivalent of 19.9% of shareholding to be in specie distributed to St. Barbara shareholders. That effectively means that St. Barbara will never have um, greater than 20% ownership of Silver Lake. And therefore that sort of change of control threshold piece is never triggered. So there's, there's never the need for the independent expert report, which just prolongs things f- from the timing perspective. So, so, and Silver Lake will now not need to do, due, uh, sorry, St. Barbara won't do due diligence on Silver Lake at all, will they? Because they're not going over that 20%? It's absolutely still, you know, a, a two week due diligence period that's, that's being baked in here. And it, does that go both ways? Yeah, they'll want to conduct reverse. I mean, because there's a big script component, if you're St. Barbara, you really want to assess what the what you think the true value of Silver Lake is because you know a huge part of this consideration is script. So yes, it will go both ways. Okay, so how are we going to interpret this announcement? We've gone into what I guess the elements that have changed, but what do we interpret in terms of timeline and what the process is going forward for both parties, for all three parties? Yeah, so how I'd interpret this, reading the announcement this morning, is that Silver Lake want to be able to get in the door and do their due diligence. So through that two-week period that they've proposed. They can do the technical due diligence on the on the Gualia mine and so on. And then they can also, in conjunction, write up that binding proposal and put that forward at the end of the two-week period. And then the sort of customary uh, matching rights that you'd suspect Genesis would have, they haven't released this to the public, would be that they might have five days or so 
to try and match that bid if that's what they decide to do. And the, and this was hinging on the fact that St Barbara were not opening the doors prior to this. And we did we did discuss it, discuss in last week's episode. Trav brought it up that based on his a bit of lawyer feedback that they another offer needed to be made, even though this offer isn't different in cash and shares, it needed to be made to really get St. Barbara to consider it. And just zoom out, right? For it. Like, so we, we obviously have done the numbers on what we think the value, we think the value is better on the Silver Lake bid, which means that the board must have denied the Silver Lake bid based on the conditionality associated with it. And what have they done here? Well, they've kept the value the same effectively, um, but they've improved the conditionality massively. So, you know, from from that respect, it, it absolutely warrants to be you know reevaluated by the board, and the board don't have to deem it a superior deal right now. There just has to be a gateway for it to become a superior deal, and that process evolves throughout you know this this due diligence process that you know Silver Lake is proposing to undertake. I think that I think that's completely right, and we looked back and. Uh just flick through the very first proposal that Genesis and St. Barbara put forward in, in December of last year. And there were just two conditions that would comprise a superior proposal from a St. Barbara point of view. And they were A, reasonably likely to be completed on a reasonable timeline and more favourable to St. Barbara shareholders than the, the transaction that was previously put forward. And I think we can agree in our eyes, check and check for, for both of those two points. So... The title, the purpose of this announcement was to alleviate the concerns of St. Barbara. Do you think this announcement has done that? I think it doesn't. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that's what the, the purpose is to, I think, build public pressure to, to um, warrant a re-evaluation, like a formal re-evaluation of a deal with less conditionality by the St. Barbara board. And talking to those two points, what you can sort of summarise, it's in the in the three dot points on the front page of the announcement today. It really speaks to two issues and they're, they're all sort of related, but that cash shortfall that we really flagged over the, the past couple of episodes we've done and the timing. Now, obviously, we've, we've delved into the, the timing just before by discussing how that independent expert review is no longer needed. So I think Silver Lake have addressed the, the cash shortfall point quite well. So there's a syndicated bank facility, uh, Westpac is a big, a big part of that, and they don't really care where the credit comes from. So we, we've done a bit of digging and we can see Silver Lake have a, a hedge book with a, with a big four, with Combank as well. And it'd be hard to imagine that there's a challenge for one of these big four banks for them to be uncomfortable taking Silver Lake as a counterparty. Mm. They've got known operations, they're sort of, they're producing, they've got cash flow, and it covers that point which, which Trav raised on the last episode we did on, on the deal. Talking about this review event, so we, we know that something comes up on the, the 30th of June, so in, in a month and a bit's time. And the St. Barbara board, they haven't explicitly mentioned it, but they're concerned about this. And I think Silver Lake are doing what they can to sort of alleviate those concerns. Totally. And just to, just to contextualise this a little bit more, we, we came to the conclusion that this deal has been rejected on conditionality, not value and so let's let's look at the conditionality one like one of them was that one of the reasons could be that it was going to take longer to complete why was the time to completion a big issue well we sort of thought maybe there are these um you know cash flow dynamics evolving and maybe there's some pressure on from the lenders um to completing at a certain period of time and silver lake have sort of you know are trying to mitigate that um that concern to the best they can by by trying to you know mind read what um, St Barbara's like, kind of actual actual issues are here with the little public information they have available. One of those pieces of information is this review date that is sort of f- um, flagged within their half year statements that on the thirtieth of June twenty twenty three, uh, their you know their, their lenders are going to conduct a review event. Um, and it's pretty vague and kind of unclear what's sort of happening around them, but a waiver has been granted um, with a, with this review event in mind in relation to, um, you know, like knowing that there's a, a completion of a, of a merger um, happening with, with Genesis. So I think our point here is that during the due diligence, Silver Lake could renegotiate these terms with the bank knowing that Silver Lake is going to be the counterparty on the other side. Absolutely right. If you if you are if you are a bank and 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 by our digging, it looks like you know Westpac has this facility. 
What's Westpac like? Westpac is absolutely absolutely going to be able to have a conversation um, with both St Barbara and Silver Lake about um, you know the the potential to just renegotiate um, some some terms for an interim period of time because they can have some level of confidence about completion, um, and that confidence is even improved with the, the lower degree of conditionality in this revised offer. So I just I just think that any sort of interim cash flow issues can totally be mitigated with thoughtful discussions with lenders. It, it would happen at a commercial rate, but it would still result, um, you know, in this in this deal being value and con- value accretive, in my opinion. Yeah. So moving on from those that cash shortfall and the timing issues, there's a, there's a few other call outs we're keen to make. One of them is that there, there hasn't really been a proper price discovery process throughout that. And what what I really mean is that there hasn't been any form of auction or market pricing St. Barbara have really been stopping the, the discovery of what these, these assets could be priced at. And that's what that Silver Lake are trying to do, aren't they? I think that's right. We, we sort of saw, you know, version one of this deal resulting in this, you know, complicated spin out and other assets and all that sort of stuff. And now, and now that it's no longer that, it's just the Leonora assets. There is no price discovery because that deal was framed with the, um, at the conclusion of the prior deal. So, now all of a sudden, I think what's happening is Silver Lake are are, are trying to turn what was a um, an off market deal into more of a, like natural price discovery by by bidding on it, and I think that will ultimately have to result in Genesis having to match that price. Now I mentioned before, Trav, they've come back. We discussed last week. They've come back with this second offer. You'd say it's kind of the same deal. Now are Saint Barbara forced to reconsider this deal now? This is um, this is a, another one for the for the legal gurus out there, and look, look, I think it's you know from what I can understand, this is it's technically a new proposal, right? Um, even if it's not higher in value, this is the information that I do have. Um, like you know, does does this does this revised proposal, even though it's the same value, warrant a reevaluation from that fiduciary element, right? And and what I've been told is it's it's technically a new proposal. Um, you know, even if it's not necessarily higher in value. You know, but because these unvested subscription rights for the further seven point five percent, they basically remove that implementation risk and timing delay from the previous condition of a fair and reasonable, um, as defined by the you know independent expert, and and that basically results in the fact that Saint Barbara they 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 won't acquire more than twenty percent of Silver Lake now. So, if if after the due diligence period, Saint Barbara conclude that you know their restructured proposal is superior, and that would trigger no Genesis is matching right. Um, that said, the due diligence hurdle, which will afford the St. Barbara board a broad discretion depending on their view of Silver Lake. And, and the attendant time delay may prove to be a sticking point here. So like the real question is, you know, what would you rather have being a St. Barbara shareholder, Silver Lake stock or Genesis stock? I think that's, the, that's a, a great question. And while we're not giving any any financial advice, you look at the two companies and you see that, that Silver Lake has many uh, producing mines, they've got cash flow. But on the other hand, they're, you know, in quotation marks, a, a less sexy business, aren't they? <laughs> less, less, um, less high public figures. Yeah, they just go about their business, the team, Luke Tonkin and, and the group there, just keep chipping away and the, the performance over the last six or seven years, maybe even longer, has, has been pretty stellar, hasn't it? Well, you got, you're gonna, they're going to have, what, 19.9% of a plus $1 billion company, whereas Genesis is currently capped at just over 600 with their Ulysses deposit and the Mount Morgans, 80% of Mount Morgans via, via a shareholding. So from an, uh, some of the parts assets valuation, you can absolutely back solve Silver Lake. You can't back solve Genesis. If you, if you think about... The, and Maddie raised this in our last chat, right? But if you, if you think about the typical St. Barbara shareholder, there is a degree to which they've watched their share price dwindle, you know, potentially 80%. Um, and and they're, they're looking at the, that loss and thinking, well, I'm now in a position where do I roll the dice with the magic man being, being Ral or, or do, I, do I accept, you know, the slow, steady, predictable, unsexy return of Silver Lake? And for people who've uh, people who've experienced that loss, they may be more susceptible to that cognitive biases that that humans are susceptible to when they, when they make these sorts of decisions. Okay, so the timeline you can see the timeline in Silver Lake's announcement, the timeline of this. So you got the two weeks of due diligence. If, as you mentioned, Trav, if it is granted, 
by St. Barbara. So let's – we will be definitely back onto this. So two – let's say two weeks' time, due diligence is done and a binding offer is submitted by Silver Lake, which is this offer converted into a binding. These are hypothetical, obviously. Then Genesis then have the matching rights to match that offer. And then, well, that will be a whole other story. What do you reckon?